Spirit's responsibility to heal the people. It's the Holy Spirit's responsibility to operate in the gifts. It's the Holy Spirit's responsibility to bring the people. Man, it's easy now to stand up here and share with me. Just give them the word. When I first started counseling, it almost killed me. I'm sure I was doing rough on the people I was counseling too. Well, years ago, I have a bachelor's degree in counseling. And when I started counseling people stuff, I was like, man, I take all their problems home with me and stuff, and I'm trying to figure out, you know what? It almost killed me, man. I'm like, what the heck am I doing? What's wrong with me? Holy Spirit said, hey, you can't handle all that. You give them my word. You tell them what I tell you to say, and then you go on home and you go to bed or whatever you're going to do and relax. That's what I do now. Man, I ain't taking on your burdens. <laughs> I ain't got no burdens. I don't want no burdens. <clears throat> now, the brother, Holy Spirit will lay things on you. He wants you to pray. He certainly wants you to separate yourself and hear from God. But I'm not burdened down with anything. Uh, you know what? Here's something else good. Don't owe nobody nothing. It feels so good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're meeting in a hotel room right now. Hey, you know what? Everything's in here is paid for. Mm -hmm. Let me give you some other good news. Sound equipment's coming. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then we're believing God for three cameras. Because we're going to take those cameras and we're going to use a splitter. We'll have somebody be running each camera and we'll be editing what's being done. And we'll go from camera to camera to camera and stuff. Where we can have. Matter of fact, let me tell you some, you some good news. Mm -hmm. I had a lady I've known. Well, I used to pastor Step of Faith in Farmersville back 10 years ago. A lady uh, sent us an email last time. Now, I don't know because my wife was telling me about it, so she's on here right now. I don't know if she's actually getting two radio stations that are going to be actual radio stations or she's setting up two on the Internet. But anyway, either way, she, she emailed us last night and said she wants to put us on there for free. So I'm like, thank you, Jesus. That's some faith going on right there. Amen. 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 Don't have to pay nothing. Listen to this. Matthew 3, verse 16. This is New Testament. Everybody say New Testament. Okay. When he had been baptized, talking about Jesus, came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were open to him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove. It wasn't a dove. It was the Holy Spirit lighting upon him. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Everybody say a voice. voice. Audible. All the people are out there heard that voice. You know how I know that? No, I'll show you. Go with me to uh, Matthew 17. I'm just going to give you a few New Testament examples and I'm going to stop. Matthew 17, verse 1. Now after six days, I believe that's prophetic. I, bet you, I believe that's a prophetic verse right there. After six days. Six, six days. Six days. That God created the earth how many days? Six days. Seventh day. Do you realize you go to 2 Peter, the third chapter, verse 8, it says a day is with the Lord is a thousand years, a thousand years is a day. How many of we just passed 6,000? I mean, you know, we're living in the last of the last days of the church age now. The world isn't going to come to the end. What's going to happen? The church is going to be caught up, and then the 144,000 will have the seal of God put in their forehead, and they'll go around and preach the gospel for the next three and a half years during the tribulation period. But how do you know? Yeah. Oh, I wish I could preach on prophecy. Thursday night, we preach on prophecy. Okay. Now, after six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, led them up on a high mountain by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. Look at this. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. And behold, Moses and Elijah. See, Moses did make it in the promised land. Moses and Elijah appeared to them, talking with him. So they were talking with him. Okay. Then Peter answered and said to Jesus, Lord, it's good for us to be here. If you wish, let us make, make here uh, three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and suddenly, everybody say a voice, voice. came out of the cloud. I, I, I challenge you, I'm not challenge you, I would advise you probably underline that. That would be good. A voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. Do you know this very thing is in Second, uh, First Peter, third chapter? Uh, it talks about that the, they heard the voice. Peter said, we heard the voice. And this is that, that prophecy that was spoken. This was God. It says this was God. He was speaking to His Son, saying, this is my beloved Son, whom I am well pleased. John 12. Because sometimes people hear the voice of God, they think it's thunder. 
You don't believe me? Go with me to John 12. I'm going to show you. John 12, 27. This is Jesus speaking. It's in red. Now my soul is troubled. And what shall I say? Just getting ready to go to the cross. Father, save me from this hour. But for this purpose, I came to this hour. <clears throat> Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. Everybody say, a voice came from heaven. I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. Therefore, the people who stood by and heard it said that it had thundered. This is the voice of the Father speaking, and people standing around thought it was thunder. Did anybody see this? Is this amazing? They didn't even know it was God's voice. They thought it was thunder. And then look what else they thought. It said, Therefore the people who stood by and heard it said that it had thunder. Others said an angel has spoken to him. I mean, it wasn't an angel. Got the Amplified? What does it say? Uh, 29. Yes, sir. The crowd of bystanders heard the sound and said that it thundered. Others said an angel has spoken to him. See, I'm telling you, if you're not in tune with the Spirit of God, He can be talking and you're not hearing nothing. Hell, to hear the Spirit of God, you've got to be willing to separate yourself from the things of the world. Yeah. You've got to be willing to tune in to what He's saying yeah. and listen to what He's saying and get serious before Him. I mean, a lot of people, man, God may speak to them, they think it's thunder. That's a shame. I said, that's a shame. You think, you think it's thunder? How do you know? How, how, how do you know it be sad if God's trying to get you prepared for the catching up of the church, but yet you're too busy doing your own little thing that you don't have time to hear what's going on. He's coming for those that are looking for Him. That's what the Scripture says. I'm going to close. Acts 9. I bet you all have seen it. I wish you heard it. Acts 9, 1. This is a good one here. This is real good. Acts 9, 1. All you, you Bible folks, and you know this one. Then Saul still breathing threats and murders against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked letters from him to the synagogues of Damascus, so that if he found any who were of the way or Christians, whether men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven. Then he fell to the ground. And what? Heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, Who are you? Paul was a very intelligent man. Who are you, Lord? Well, he was pretty smart, wasn't he? The Lord said, I'm Jesus whom you're persecuting. It's hard for you to kick against the goats. So he trembling. Would you be trembling? Sure you would. All of us would. And astonished said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Then the Lord said to him, Arise and go into the city you'll be told what you must do. And then, and the men who journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no one. See, it's New Testament, guys. God still speaks audibly if the situation calls for it. Why can't He? Jesus can operate in heaven and earth. He's got a glorified body just like you and I are going to have one of these days. We're going to be operating in heaven and earth. That's sweet. I want to go just a little bit further and I'm going to stop. Verse 10 of the same chapter. Now there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias and to him the Lord said in a vision. vision. Everybody say a vision. vision. God speaks through visions. We're going to get into that in the upcoming weeks. God can speak through a dream. God can speak through a man or a woman to you. God can speak to an angel. He can literally send a messenger, an angel, to come to you with a word from God. And I'm going to tell you, listen to what I'm saying to you, in the upcoming days and weeks ahead before Jesus gets to the church, there's going to be a lot more manifestations of angels than ever before. Now, we're not searching for an angel. We're not looking for an angel to come down and give us a message or talk to us. But if need be, God will send one in this hour. Angels are going to be more on assignment in this hour than they ever have been. Of course, there's going to be a big assignment during the tribulation period, too. Matter of fact, for the first time in the history of the world, angels will actually preach the gospel during the last part of the tribulation period. 
How many of they don't preach the gospel now? They bring messages. That's what you and I are called to do is to preach the gospel. We're His mouthpiece on this earth. That's the reason we got to hear what He's saying. If we're not hearing what He's saying, we're not going to be able to do what He's telling us to do. And how many know it's good to do things that you know is right and good, but how many know you want to make sure it's a God thing and not just something that's right and good? How many know that their places are important? Where you're at is important. God puts you in places where you can do specific things. Your blessings are in those places. Amen? Amen. Now, thank you, Lord. How many know in this hour, many people, and it's sad to say, and it's sad to even see, but a lot of people are trying to work two jobs to provide for their families. How many of that isn't God's best? How many know when we're trying to work two jobs to prepare and take care of our family, and we know we have to take care of our family because the Word says if you don't take care of your own family, you're worse than infidel. I'm not saying, but listen to me. How many of that isn't God if you're trying to do two jobs? Y'all are looking at me strange. Huh. God has supernatural provision for us in the body of Christ. We have just got to hear what He's saying and put our hands to what He's telling us to do. If there's ever a time for people to hear the voice of God, it's now because there's creative ideas like never before. There is things that literally God can speak into your life and you can be a multi-millionaire in a year from now. That's what's happening. There's things coming on this earth in the very near future that hasn't ever been built. Okay, think about it. Think about the iPhone. A few years ago, there was no such thing as an iPhone. A few years ago, there was no such thing as a smartphone. Do you know now they've got it down there where you can have a watch that has a little television on it. You watch television on your watch. Look in your automobiles. Drive down the road, man. I know a guy that had a stinking monitor in the front. He could drive down the road and watch television. I'm like, that's what we need. Some guy drive down the road and watch yeah, television. TV. I don't think so. He got enough problems. So that's why he drive down the road and watch television. Now, hang on, that's illegal. If you get caught, you'll get a major, major ticket for that. Now, you can have it in the back and you can have it behind where the driver can't see it. You know? But, you know, there's things to be invented. There's things, matter of fact, there's things that can be invented and be improved on invention that's already here, and people can become wealthy overnight. The problem is, see, we haven't taken enough time. And this is what the Holy Spirit told me, and I'm going to stop with this. But the Holy Spirit told me this about two or three years ago now. Probably three years ago now. He said to me, son, he said, my ministers have done a great job of teaching my people they need to tithe and give offerings. But he said, they've done a lousy job of teaching my people how to be successful. Because most time, if you hear most ministers, they're always telling people, you need to go get a job. You need to go get a job. You need to go get a job. How do you know what job stands for? Just over broke. They're going to give you enough money to keep you and give you incentive not to go somewhere else. They give you just enough to stay there. We should have been telling people, no, you need to be an entrepreneur. You need to own your own business. Because then you determine how much you pay someone. I'm going to give you a statistic. This is, I'm telling you, man, this stuff is just 5%. I say 5%. 5%. Other people in the United States are entrepreneurs, they're business owners, they're investors. They control 90%. I say 90% of the wealth. Now think about this. If they got upset one day, all this this five percent said, you know, we're going to take our money and our toys and we're going home. 